What's up you freaking geniuses? So in this video, I'm going to give you an intro into algebraic symbols and I'm going to break down some examples and I'm also going to explain why we change the multiplication symbol from an X to a dot, which is more commonly used or parentheses, but we'll get into that. Okay. So I'm going to show you what symbols we use for addition, subtraction, multiplication and division because it changes a little bit. But for addition and subtraction, they pretty much stay the same. So let's start there. So when we're adding, this is the symbol we use. Boom. It looks the exact same because it is the exact same. Nothing changes here. Okay. Whenever you see this cross, this plus sign just means add. So if I saw three plus five, literally just means add. So this would be eight. So nothing changes here. Now let's jump over to subtraction. So subtraction, subtraction. Okay, nothing changes here either. It's this symbol. Okay, that's good. <laughs> so subtraction is still just the straight line. Okay, so if I saw something like five minus three, okay, this symbol just still means subtraction. So five minus three would just be two. Uh, the other thing that it still stands for is negative numbers. So if I saw something like that, this number would be negative nine. Okay. So it still means those two things. It means subtraction and it means negative. Okay. So now let's get into multiplication. So this is where things start to get different. Now, when you first learn multiplication, the normal way you would see it would be like this, right? With that symbol. So if I wrote three X five, this would mean three times five, right? Which would be 15. But this is the new way you're going to start writing this. So instead of this X, you're going to start writing a dot. Now this is multiplication in algebra. So now this is three times five, and this is still equal to 15. Okay, so we're literally just changing it from an X to a dot. Okay, why are we doing that? So we use a lot of variables in pre-algebra and algebra, and we mostly use X. That's like the most common one. So if I wrote three X five in algebra, I don't know if this is saying three times five or if this is saying three times X times five. Okay, because those two are two completely different things. Or something else you could see is 7x. And then you would ask yourself, well, this is weird. What, what does this mean? 7 times what? Shouldn't there be another number here? Well, no, because we use variables in algebra. So it's understood this is saying 7 times x. So again, stop using the x. Don't use that anymore because that's going to get super confusing if you still use it. Okay, so instead of an X, just make sure you use these dots, right? These dots right here. And there's another way we can also show multiplication in algebra, and that's through parentheses. So let me show you that really quick. Now, another way I could write three times five is also as three and five. Each one is in its own parentheses. These two statements are equivalent. Okay. Another way I could write this is three and I could put the five in parentheses, but they're right next to each other. So it's understood that this is also multiplication or I could put their, or I could switch the parentheses around. I could put it on the three and then put the five here. And this also means the same thing. Okay. So this means three times five. So that'd be 15. This means three times five, which is also 15. This means three times five, which is also 15. Okay. Same thing with the last one. These are all different ways you can write multiplication problems. And one last really important thing to understand about multiplication is that when you multiply numbers together, it's a little different than multiplying letters and numbers together. Okay. So let me explain what I mean. So let's take this example again. So I could write this as seven times X. I could write it as seven times X. I could use any of these variations, right? I could use these variations, but the other one I can also use is this one, seven X literally just put them right next to each other. 
And this means the exact same thing. This one right here means the exact same thing as this one and as this one and as these two, if I wrote them out like that. So as you can see, I don't need to put parentheses. I don't even need to put a dot. I can literally just write them next to each other, but realize this is a number and this is a variable. Okay, I can't do that with two numbers. So if I wanted to multiply three times five, right? I could write it like this again, three times five, but I can't just put it next to each other, right? Because this number is the number 35. That does not mean three times five. That's just the number 35. So whenever I'm multiplying two numbers together, I always have to put you know, a dot or put them in parentheses or do something. I can't just put them next to each other like I can with a number or a constant and a variable. Okay, and lastly, let's cover division. Division, okay, it's still this symbol. So if you saw something like six divided by two, okay, that still just means division. So six divided by two, that would just be three. Now there's other ways we can also show these division problems. And the most common way you're probably gonna start using it is as a fraction. So just like this means six divided by two, so does this, six divided by two. Or occasionally you will see it like this, six divided by two. And all these three are the same as six divided by two. These four, this one, this one, this one, and this one, they're, they all mean the same thing. But the most common one you're gonna see probably starting is this one, but then shortly thereafter, you're gonna mostly use fractions. So this is the way you're mostly gonna start seeing division problems. All right guys, so that was it. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, please leave a thumbs up down below. And if you still got questions, just leave them in the comment section below and I'll try and help you out. If you need help with any other pre-algebra topics, I have a whole playlist attached at the end of the video, so definitely check those out and I'll see you there.